All right, heading off to Half-Ass Customs today. Gonna catch a flight, head over to Winnipeg. We are gonna do some metal shaping together. We are gonna work on his power hammer together. We're gonna have a small group of guys, just mostly his friends and, uh, and some of my contacts as well that we're gonna do a little one day metal shaping class. So we've got a bunch of Mother Tucker hammers. These bad boys, they're on the site if you want them. Uh, so I'm bringing a bunch of those out. I've got my grinding disc because we're going to make a bunch of bowls out of some stumps. Do some hand metal shaping. And also my contribution to uh, helping, I guess, rebuild Half-Ass's inventory of tools. Brent, he's a great guy and he's very deserving of this. I'm going to give him a 24-inch planishing hammer. Um, the full kit. All the dies. we got the foot pedal in here. we got the hose. This is our uh, planishing hammer, and uh, yeah, I couldn't be a better guy to go to. It's my last one. This is the this is the last one for the until the next run. So I'm actually working on another run of these planishing hammers. I know a lot of you guys want them, and uh, and this last one's going to Brent. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. But uh, anyway, let's get packed up, hop on this flight. Uh, I think we're gonna go see DD Speed Shop today too. I'm not even sure, but. Uh, Brent's got a bunch of stuff planned. I've got a plane to catch. I guess that's it. Better get cracking. Go see Brent. All right, just about six o'clock. Touched down to Winnipeg. We're two hours ahead. Just heading over to baggage claim. Go find the uh, planching hammer and uh, Mother Tucker hammers. <laughs> it's a pretty heavy package. <laughs> Esther, what's up? Hi. Oh, good to see you too. Welcome to the prairie. Brent's yeah, right there for you. There he is. <laughs> I can't believe your camera's not out right now. <laughs> Good to see you. Right on. We found them. Hi. We just gotta go find the bags. To my humble abode courtesy of uh, Esther and Brent and uh, here we go day one let's get to work half ass customs you all know the spot a little bit of tragedy in this direction there's the man himself picking parts from the pile we're gonna do a bunch of work while we're here we're gonna try and fix a couple tools and uh, we're gonna rope in a window on Brent's Chevy 58 that he's been working on. I'm sure you've seen it on his channel. The original rubber is actually in really good shape, so we're gonna actually use that with the new glass. And uh, we're gonna clean up this English wheel a little bit. He's got his cool little power hammer. We're gonna do some work on that. Morning, Brent. Good day. Eh? Hey. <laughs> <laughs>
So if you've never done that before, you rope in a glass, you rope in a seal, put the rope all the way around inside the seal when it's on the glass, and, uh, and you kind of leave a couple of tangs sticking out in the middle. This one, in this case, you put the bottom in first, and then we pull the rope, and the rope peels the rubber over the little lip. Ask me how I know bottom first. <laughs> how do you know bottom first? <laughs> You'd have to look at an old video to figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> he screwed it up just like everybody has ever screwed it up, which is why we're telling you how to do it. Bottom first, right? So you have the two tangs. We didn't actually, we weren't able to leave both, so we actually roped it around all the way, but it's better if you leave both rope tangs and work both sides at the same time. You have better, better with that, but this one went in easy. It's amazing what a brand new glass does for a truck, man. It just like looks like a good, Good to go truck now that it's got a windshield. <laughs> and a brow. And a, and a brow, yeah. I can't believe how rusty that was, man. I don't, you haven't dropped the video of finishing that yet, have you? No. No, okay, so like, well, I'm sure by the time you see now, this no. one, it'll be up there, but, but man, there was like nothing there. <laughs> it was gone. You see my new shirt? <laughs> So what's next? Are we pulling it out now? We are pretty much done. You're gonna go for a burn. Go for a burn. <laughs> Let her rip. All right, let's have a look at this hammer. I love this thing. I love homemade tools. Like this thing has got some ingenuity going on. <laughs> like your ori original plan was to what with the diff? Cause it's, it serves multiple purposes now, right? Like you had motor connected to pinion. Yeah, my right? idea, cause you can see I had a, my goal was to hook an emergency brake up to a pedal. That way I could use this drum to vary my swing or the speed to which whatever the motor's spinning. I gotcha. Unfortunately, not a thing turns after it went all crispy, so. Mm, yeah, fire messes a lot of stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> it looks cool though. Definitely worked. I mean, definitely it made did. panels for your for your coupe with it and stuff, so. Yeah. He's got square tube inside of, kind of like square tube. Yeah. He had adjusters here to uh, tighten up what was like a, a Teflon bushing yeah. or a nylon uh, like plates inside there. Um, so that everything was good. He has the same thing down here. So we're gonna have to free up the adjuster, make it move again. We're gonna have to, uh, I guess, put new slide. Some kind of a slide in there. Slides in there. And we'll then to replace all the bearings. Fix this mech at the top here. Yeah, yeah, either we're gonna do, I think we'll just do another diff. I think it's just the easiest down and dirty way to do it. And then we'll cut a proper, proper plate that attached to the yoke. Okay. Cause I just, Boogered a four sprocket into there, so it just danced and did whatever. I don't know. It worked. I mean, it worked. <laughs> it worked. All right, so we're gonna go drag a diff out. We're gonna yeah. bring this. Uh, bring that in, and we'll find either an S10 in. diff or something interesting. Cool.
calculate his depth to the millimeter. <laughs> Ran over him once with a trailer because his lazy ass wouldn't get out of the way. No way. All right, we made a mess and we got the diff out. I'm kind of blown away sometimes when I like come to a place like this. He's got a loader like this. This whole thing's sitting in the field. It's like hard to get at. <laughs> like three seconds later, it's like on the floor right in front of the shop and we're working on it. I need one of those. Well, I need a property like this that I have a whole parts, you know, <laughs> thing. And then a little loader. It happened. Man. <laughs> It's smaller in person. It looks bigger on camera. Apple's bigger. Yeah. <laughs> Too cool. Okay, it is diff. It is locked up. We're gonna unlock it. It's a little bit smaller. It's like from an English car. It's not a Chevy or anything. Um, we were able to pick it up with like one arm each, you know? But um, the, the trick is we're gonna free this thing up and, uh, and get her going. This one end is gonna be our I guess open end, um, one end will be locked so that when you turn this, it just drives the one end. And if you wanted to slip it, you could potentially use the e-brake cable on that side to clutch it, which I thought was a very ingenious idea that, that Brent came up with. But uh, anyway, that's the plan. Let's get to work.
Jim on that side? It's prefect. Mint. Do you see the pun that I have there? <laughs> you didn't catch it. <laughs> it actually fits pretty good. Right? Yeah, I think it's just I had a goofy shim mug going on up here. My math mathematical calculations are screwy. Yeah, it's got to go back a bit. Yeah. Okay, I'll lose it back. Push. Okay. I'm not sure where this is yet. But yeah. I think take, cut this or just take bash the, that off. off yeah. I think that just goes off because if I look at that, I just welded it on. Oh, I see. Yep. Yeah. Zero math to it. Eh? funny. Like, I wonder if you can, yeah, I guess it's, yeah, no problem. If that doesn't have the slide, that's the problem. Well, I guess no. we, could, we could set it back more, that we could, nah, it doesn't need the yeah, bolt. No, it doesn't need it. It's like, we could reuse this thing and just burn it back on it. Yeah, absolutely. Pretty much just sledgehammer those out and we're done. Oh, like, just, yeah, take, pull these off, cut those off, like, cut the studs off, too. Yeah, right? one yeah. or the other. Okay, I'll do it. All right, so at this point, we've got the diff sitting up here, a bunch of stuff lopped off of, off of it. Um, this is the face that is going to be this face. This slotted plate that Brent's made is the adjuster for stroke. So he's got this slotted deal in here so he can go you know, from small stroke to large stroke with the hammer and a uh, pretty handy little unit. So I'm gonna cut this piece off and we are gonna use it again on this rear end. Um, Brent has got the bearings coming apart. He's got a new bearing to replace in this. And I guess you probably have new bearings for that too. Uh, so you're just gonna replace all the bearings in those. We're gonna reuse all that. Like I said, we're gonna put that piece on here. And then this is basically good to go. Like he's, we're just gonna have to use some cutting board or something to make the slide that melted out of the head here. And, uh, and once that's good, we'll, you know, we'll align it, we'll tack the rear end on, and then we'll have to make a motor mount um, or just get another motor on here. Obviously this one's not no good. So he's got a two horse laying around. I think it's outside or something. I don't know. He's got a couple of different motors that we can go and, uh, and go ahead and mount on there. Yeah, I mean, we could grind grind some of that stuff off and get it ready. This is still hot as hell. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's hot too. Yeah, it's all, it's all very hot. It's all very hot. <laughs> Brent rebuilt this in about four minutes. So we've got new bearings and everything, new pillow blocks here. And uh, so that. Whole that neck is, goes this way. Yep, I've got it goes up the down. top. That's yep. the bottom. I have two random connecting rods that happen to have a one inch bore. So I just welded them together and just kind of worked. Such a farmer. <laughs> <laughs> it never but, fell apart. But so. not. I mean, it all works. Yeah. So the idea is well, I got a plate that has to sit on there, but then from there we can adjust the throw. Perfect. Makes dollars and cents. 
There's the hot plate, wherever it is. That's three minutes down. Behind you is the other. Oh. There it is. Decent one. Still hot. That's what he's talking about, though. Weld it to the face of that. Well, we're having a little bit of an issue. This stuff is not nylon, it's just plastic. So um, we are anticipating that it is going to kind of burn funny and uh, when activated with heat, being a slide, this stuff is probably going to hurt and, uh, and just melt. So we're gonna go to town, use an excuse to go for a burn in the Merc and uh, see if we can't find some nylon or steel or some other kind of slidey material. Yep. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> I'm driving this thing all the way back to BC, so this is going to be fun. Better get some seat time in this car. All right. I assume that's on. Yup. Uh... Oh. Nothing. is great! Brakes are a little squishy. Yeah, those are... They all feel like plastic. Yeah, those are plastic. That's plastic. Right? What does it say? A poly board. Poly board. Well, Precision Machine fixed us up. We got ourselves some puck board. Um, he says it's really good for slipping and wear, so I guess that's what we're gonna use. We're just gonna jam it in there. Five bucks from Harold, and he chatted our ear off a little bit about the uh, the Roadster. And uh, what a great guy! What a great place. So we are heading back. Well, I remember doing rods for some. Also, get the brake line is clear. Well, if you follow Brent's channel, you may have seen other Brent, Brent Martins. <laughs> I remember this car from watching his channel. 
Uh, they got this thing running, and, and now uh, now Brent Martin, BM, <laughs> he's uh, he's getting getting it getting it all ready to go for a new paint job. It's looking good. He's just showing us around his shop today, and we're on our little tour, so another cool spot to stop. Chasing him around the car. There he is. Oh, there you are. There he is. What's up, Brent? <laughs> Brent and Brent. Cool man. Just going black, Henry Ford? Nope, uh, I think it's gonna be dark gray with black fenders. Oh, all right, that's cool, that's cool. Yeah. So you get Sweet. full upholstery and everything. Damn. You just stitching up? Yeah, I'll do it. So these guys are telling me that this was just kind of junk in your yard, right? Yeah. And then they made doors for it, stuck it together, made this Roadster, flathead powered, Little T Roadster, super badass. And that's what, you're gonna jam those on here? Like nope, the brakes? Nope, this oh, this is all juice brakes. Oh, so you're putting the juice brakes on those, on this. On ah, I got gotcha. you. Like eventually, because I was still all stocked with the mechanicals on it. Yep. Gotcha. As long as that okay. Too cool. guy's crazier than I thought let me drive his roaster. A tooth, bud? You going for a little tooth? <laughs> hey. Move over. Okay. Was that a good ride? Was that a good ride, buddy? <laughs> yeah. All right, we made it back from a fun little cruise, looking for this. We don't we don't actually know what puck board is. This is from obviously like a, a hockey uh, arena, I guess. Brink. I knew, I knew Brink. where it was from. Yeah. Well, yeah, you knew where it's from. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what it is. Like, is it Teflon? Is it nylon? What oh, is what is puck board? I don't know, but it seems slippy, and now it's in here. It's the perfect size. Uh, it's all adjusted up and it still kind of slips in and out of there. We're going to grease it up a little bit, but worked perfect. Now we're ready. Now that this is aligned, we can put this whole situation welded onto the rear end, which is our oblongy stroke yeah, deal. We want to get that lined up and then we can burn my differential to the, to the chassis or the yeah. frame. And then, yeah. yeah. And Weld there. Well, this well, the somewhere over there, or something and or a pulley. Almost there.
All right, so Brent is going to make a couple plates to mount, like a couple of U-shaped plates at the top, little brackets that are gonna cradle that rear end on top. We're gonna lift it a little bit higher than it was. I think it's also a smaller rear end, so it's sitting a little bit lower. It's just gonna get a little bit more room in the jaws to do profile dies later. So I'm gonna clean everything off the top. Brent's gonna go do plasma stuff and uh, make some brackets and motor mount plates. And then we're gonna hammer smash. All right, so top is cleaned off. Brent has made these little plates on his plasma. These are the cradles. And I have one here. Then one of them is just gonna be slapped onto the back. That'll be this one. Just like that. That will cradle the rear end. And we're gonna tack that on in just a moment. Then we'll have to get these pieces tacked on for the slider. Um, and then we can just do the motor mount. Motor mount's gonna be pretty simple. He's got this big two horse ball door industrial motor. We're gonna use the pulley that it had, which is this one. And then we are gonna use this pulley <laughs> on this diff, just like that. It's gonna work, man. It's probably gonna go like stink. <laughs> he says it's gonna be stinky. We don't know. <laughs> we, we have no idea how fast it's gonna go. Well, what do you think the gears are in that rear end? Probably like two somethings? Probably. Two nines or something, right? Yeah. So that plus this to that. What do we got here? Math. All the maths, I count, and I, I don't know. Let's just do it. Yeah. <laughs> We're just gonna do it. We're just gonna find a belt and then mount the motor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Didn't think of that. <laughs> Something in the yard is going to be missing a bill. All right, this is on now, the slider works. Check it out, we've got movement. We've got smashy smash. And then uh, Brent over here, full on horseshoe right up his butt. <laughs> Check this out. Show us what you did. Well, I got a sleeve for that. I had an idea of doing a different pulley system, but yeah, it kind of fits on the pinion bearing just nicely. <laughs> it literally aligns it like <laughs> as if it was like a clutch alignment tool.
action. Ready. Slots. Yep. Then the motor bolts on and is adjustable and slottable and all that jazz. Yep. And then quite possibly some kind of foot pedal variable speed. Is it necessary? No. Uh, right now, would it be kinda, cool? Yeah. It's kind of stuck. Maybe you save it once you shorten the axle and everything. Typical. Slag. Knocking slag off with a sledgehammer. It's <laughs> <laughs> actually not bad. Yeah, looks like it works. So, Brent's got the plate all made up for the adjustments of the motor. And we're going to weld that on the back. I just finished welding everything up. I kind of dressed up the dies a little bit. And we should be ready to mount the motor, I guess. And then give this thing a real, real tryout. Okay, we're getting there. Dies are aligned, reworked a little bit. We're gonna see how they are. We might have to rework them a bit more. Motor's mounted, it has adjustment. The pulley has changed to the larger pulley on the motor now, so now it's one to one, and then the gear ratio of the gear, of the uh, rear end is two nine something, maybe is what our guess is. So, um, yeah, I guess that would mean that our stroke is like a third of whatever the RPM is, right? Sure. All, all the maths. <laughs> Not that it matters, it's just a smasher. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> all right, I'm gonna plug this in. It's gonna make a lot of noise. I'll probably have to hold it while it dances around the shop. Okay, put my foot on it. Oh, go again. No, I think. Uh... Oh, killed, killed something.
Okay. So, so far, we need to tighten this up a little bit because it's not quite getting flat. Take two. See how she smashes. Tighter, right? Yeah, well, it's, it's still not actually smashing it all the way tight. Like when you get to the end and it's easy, it, it, it does it. That's but. kind of the problem I've always had with it. No, yeah. not quite that bad, but it was pretty much like that. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 should, it should go right flat. So. It's probably um, dyes need some more work. It's, yeah, it's dyes and it's like, like I, guess, I guess stiffness as well. Mm. Possibly, like I, it's it's tightened down so that it's like making full contact, right? But yeah. Oh yeah, no, it is also dies. Yeah, see, we've got light in the front. Yeah. That little light in the front, I think, is oh. why it's not fully doing that. So maybe we've got to do this. Okay. And then when it smashes, like, and this deflects a little bit, makes that maybe a little bit worse. So we'll have to. Cut the upper one, get it squared? Yeah, we could either cut the upper one and square it or cut the lower one and square it. Um, either or, really. Or just have it so that there's, oh yeah, that takes care of it right there. I mean, yeah. Just made everything too sloppy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're gonna figure it out. <laughs> Put the pin in. See if it stops it. I think it'll still go up. Probably will just be vicious everywhere, but. What do you want? Uh, I just wanna see this. I guarantee it'll be like 14 times better already for sure. Maybe There's more, eh? Maybe a touch more. If you can get, I think you can get it. Is your beer? You can go to fill up with Yep, go ahead. Yahtzee, MF for Yahtzee. Oh yeah. Now we're talking. That might even be too tight now. Let's try it. Let her rip. Hey.
That's not made out of hot garbage, eh? Full candy dish production. <laughs> Let's go, Amazon. We need a thousand orders for candy dishes. Wow. <laughs> that is awesome. Right on. It's better. I mean, we can even get it even better, but it's... That's like, already like 100 times from what I was just working with, right? Because mine was like this, and I'm like, I'm not understanding what I was doing wrong. Yeah, it's all the dyes and how they line up and shit. And like, but this is like, totally, I can put Hondo on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, as soon as you put that in the planishing hammer, it's yeah. chrome. Like, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's just about not wearing, like, working, overworking the metal in a spot. Yeah, yeah. The dyes, but like... That's insane. Winning! Winning! <laughs> winning! <Bye -bye. laughs> yeah. Right on, just in time for dinner. Like I could hear it in the house and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. go, 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 go. <laughs> Okay, yes, there's some weird chunks of plate here that kind of look like a bead roller. <laughs> uh, quick backstory so you understand why those are there. There's the bead roller plates that Brent is gonna uh, make the make it custom bead roller. But uh, the first time he tried to change the files from DWG to DXF, they came in a slightly miniature version. So we just tacked these on here to see if it helped the deflection in this machine by a bunch where it's worth us plating it in. Turns out, yes, it helped it quite a bit. Um, it, it's working quite well. So what we're gonna do now is just cut a couple of pieces of plate that are gonna box this in and take care of that deflection so that we can get rid of these very nice speed roller plates. <laughs> uh, also, Brent has lobbed off the back side of this. We are not going to variable speed this machine because it's a fixed stroke machine. Um, or shouldn't say fixed stroke, but uh, unsprung. It's just not necessary. So um, right now he's just welding up the axle to lock it in place. And it's just a, you know, a right angle drive unit now. Um, and yeah, everything seems to be working just fine. So. Time to pretty it up, and we're done. <laughs> <laughs> bam bam 2.0 
that for like a minute. <laughs> Those dies are actually working pretty good, man. Look at that. Not making any weird marks. No. Yeah. Must have got them aligned, eh? Yeah. Right on. Candy dishes for days. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. I know I've played with it a little bit too, and it's good to go. Yeah, right on. Right on. <laughs> Woo! Beauty. I think that's a, uh, I think that's a wrap. This thing works really good. Makes really cool hats. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know. This is awesome. We got this one done. We got our English wheel while Ryder was out, right? And we got that all prepped, so that thing's good to go. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think the next step is we're gonna go haul our coop in and uh, see what we can do there. Play with that a little bit. <laughs> I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose like you'll <clears throat> Alright, we're gonna call that a video. What a success. Bam Bam 2.0 is, uh, is a great working power hammer. I'm actually super impressed by the whole thing. Like the fact that uh, we yarded a rear end out of an envoy in the field. <laughs> it still had diff oil in it. It, it works awesome. Like, like here's a tip. If you're gonna make a hammer, that is a wicked mechanism to use. Like just use a rear end because it's already a 90 degree. It's already gear reduction. It's already got heavy duty bearings in it. Like. Good idea, Brent. Nice. <laughs> That's rad. Um, and yeah, I'm, I don't know, I'm just impressed. Like we ended up strengthening it up with a little bit of 3 16 plate. That helped a lot of the deflection and then just realigning the dies, giving them a little bit of a grind. It uh, definitely improved the machine. And man, I am impressed. This big, big hammer, super powerful. It runs on 110 volt, like tiny little extension cord, 110 volt motor, two horsepower, and uh, and a foot switch from Amazon for 15 bucks. Like this thing is deadly. <laughs> so uh, yeah. Anyway, don't be afraid to build tools, everybody. This is killer. Um, puck board is what we ended up using from uh, Precision Machine to to keep the slippy in the in the slider. And yeah, we got more work to do. So um, I think we're bringing in the coop next. Yeah. We're gonna do a little bit of. Uh, uh, fire restoration on the coop trying to push out some of the damage and um, yeah, that'll be the next video So thanks for watching everybody. And we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks a lot Brent for having me out and uh, We'll see you later